So I've picked up the Google Pixel 8 and I've been using it now for the last few weeks. I've got some thoughts, specifically why I'm sending the Pixel 8 back. For the past few weeks, Google Fi, who is the carrier I use for my Android device, has been running a deep discount on the Pixel 8. It's currently $300 off, dropping the price down to right under $400. Well, there is a catch, but it is a small catch. Essentially, the catch is you have to keep using the phone for 120 days. You got to keep your SIM card in the phone. But once you get past that 120 days, the phone's yours and you can do with it what you want. They're just doing that to keep somebody from picking this up at a steep discount and then reselling it at a higher dollar amount. Now, for the last year, I've been using the Samsung Galaxy A53 as my Android device, and I love that phone. The camera is just amazing. I use the Galaxy A53 for all of my close-up product shots and my videos, but that phone is now a couple of years old, and I kinda wanna try a new phone. So, I picked up the Google Pixel 8. Now the Google Pixel 8 has a 6.2 inch OLED display and compared to the six and a half inch screen on the Galaxy A53 and the 6.7 inch screen on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, it's definitely a smaller sized phone in comparison. Now in the settings menu, you can turn on smooth display, which raises the refresh rate from 60 to 120 Hertz. This doesn't come set out of the box. So you do have to go in and change the setting if that's what you want. Now, if you're asking yourself, does 120 hertz really make that much of a difference? You know, I do notice a little bit of additional smoothness to the movement on the screen. And obviously I prefer to have it rather than not have it, but I can't say to my eye at least is overwhelmingly obvious and that it would be a deal breaker if it didn't have it. But I do think, you know, obviously 120 hertz is gonna give you a smoother experience. It's just, can you really see it? Now the display isn't always on display with at the glance notifications, which I love right up here at the top. Uh, and I do use those. It's nice and bright. And one feature that I really like is the now playing feature where the Pixel phone will listen for music in your surroundings and identify it for you on the lock screen without you even asking it to. So the software experience on the Pixel is probably the best you're gonna get on Android. And one of the biggest reasons that I went with the Pixel 8. Now the Pixel 8 comes with eight gigs of memory and 128 gigs of storage. And the chip inside is the Google Tensor G3. In terms of performance, I have noticed some lag and hangups, especially when playing games, even fairly lightweight games. I'm not a big gamer, but even some of the lightweight games that I play, I, they do kind of hang up from time to time. It's a little bit glitchy. So if gaming is something that you are buying this phone for, you might want to look somewhere else. The Pixel 8 and the Pixel 8 Pro do share the same Tensor G3 chip, but the Pixel 8 Pro comes with 12 gigs of RAM instead of eight. This phone feels a bit underpowered even when compared to more budget phones like the Galaxy A53, which is a couple of years older now and seems to run even smoother to me than, than this phone does. Pixel 8 has an under display fingerprint sensor, which I love. I've heard other reviewers complain about the responsiveness of the fingerprint sensor, but I've had zero issues. It works super fast in my opinion. Now on the back, it has a 50 megapixel main camera with, with optical and electronic image stabilization and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. On the front, it has a selfie camera. I'm not gonna go deep into the camera in this review as to be completely transparent. My expertise is really not in photography. I don't take a lot of photos other than just regular family photos and this phone looks, works great for that. But I do film a lot of video, especially close up product shots and can say that the Google Pixel camera is great for video. I'm also interested in some of the AI correction features the camera comes with, like face swap, but I really haven't had a chance or even a need to use that feature yet. Now it does have stereo speakers coming from both the bottom and the top of the phone. They sound fine. I mean, compared to the iPhone, uh, you're just never gonna measure up in terms of audio. Apple just gets it right, but these sound pretty good. They get nice and loud and they work just fine. Google does advertise 24 plus hours of battery life, which you're not gonna get that with normal use. I'm experiencing almost, you know, barely a full day with solid use. I love the form factor and the feel in the hand of the Pixel 8. The rounded edges make this phone great to hold. I love the smooth glass on the back of the phone. The aluminum sides and the camera bar combined with the glass back 
really just give this foam phone a premium look and feel. Now you get Gorilla Glass 4 on the front display and the back glass. As I always say in my videos, you definitely want to put a screen protector and a case on this phone. Currently I'm rocking later case along with a generic screen protector I bought off of Amazon. I'll include links to both down below if you're interested in those products. You can also use face unlock with this phone, although it is only using the single selfie camera to unlock via face unlock. So keep in mind, it's not as secure. I do like having the combination of both a fingerprint sensor and face unlock available. It's something I definitely wish the iPhone had. Pixel 8 does offer wireless charging, which is something I really like to have. If I can place a wireless charging pad down on my desk, then it helps keep my wires in place and just looks cleaner. I don't have wires all over the place charging all my devices. I know I'm being a bit picky here, but it is what it is. Lastly, the biggest reason to go with a Pixel device is the stock Android experience. You really can't beat it in my opinion. My biggest complaint about Samsung devices, for example, is their one UI interface. It just feels outdated and utilitarian. That's the only thing I don't like about the Galaxy A53 I've been using. I want something more out of my phone and I don't wanna to have to use a custom launcher. I want the best out of the box experience I can get. And that is what the Pixel device offers in terms of the software experience. So at the end of the day, why am I sending this phone back? I know I have some nitpicks, but ultimately this is a really good phone. And for the price, it's great value for your money, especially with that deal from Google Fi, you should definitely check that out. There are really two reasons I'm sending this phone back. The main reason is the screen size. I think I've just gotten too used to having a larger screen size. I simply want a bigger screen. Even though the screen is 6.2 inches, it feels small to me compared to my iPhone 15 Pro Max. And I find myself wanting to use this phone less and less because of the smaller screen size. Now don't get me wrong, I love how this phone fits in my pockets. It just disappears into my pocket compared to the larger iPhone that you just feel all the time. You know, I love the size in terms of pocket ability. Uh, one of the reasons I bought the Pixel 8 was for the smaller screen size. Uh, you know, I've been tempted for the past couple of years to buy the smaller iPhone Pro as opposed to the Pro Max and I wanted to know if I could get away with liking a smaller phone size. After using this phone, I've kind of answered that question for me. And for me, really, it's I want the bigger sized phone. That's just what I like. Second reason I'm sending this back is performance. So those little hangups I mentioned before are simply annoying. And again, I find myself not wanting to use this phone because of them. To be honest, it's not prevalent. They're not happening all the time, but they do happen from time to time. And I just know that if I trust using this phone with maybe a competitive game or something like that. Now I've gone back and forth quite a bit on this because I love the stock Android experience and the camera system on the Pixel 8, but I just want to try something different. So currently I'm considering either going with a larger Pixel 8 Pro. It does have that extra four gigs of RAM and I would like to compare it against the Pixel 8 to see is the Pixel 8 Pro better or nothing phone to. And really I want to do that to check out the glyph lights, uh, the unique user interface of Nothing Phone, as well as to see how the Snapdragon 8th Gen processor performs in comparison to the Pixel 8. So these are my thoughts on the Pixel 8. I hope I've been able to answer some of the questions you might be having. Let me know which phone you would go with down in the comments between the Pixel 8 Pro and Nothing Phone 2, or another phone that I should be taking a look at. Just let me know. If you have any other questions, definitely leave me a comment down below. I appreciate you watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Peace.